Hello, 405. Welcome to Lab 8, Skill-Related Fitness Test. The goal for this lab is to assess your client's current skill level on speed, balance, reaction time, coordination, and multidirectional agility. So all the tests that we're going to perform today are going to allow us to record and obtain baseline data on where they are at according to these skills, and also over time to compare those results a uh, couple of weeks um, after you have completed your exercise program. Um, you'll be able to collect baseline data where they are at on that skill level and then track progress that is resulting from the training. If you're doing specific training to improve speed or improve balance, right? you have those tests that you can perform, record that baseline data and keep recording track progress. So this is an overview of the tests that we have performed throughout the semester. We have performed the health related fitness tests to determine cardiorespiratory fitness, body composition and musculoskeletal fitness, also flexibility. And we, test mus we tested muscular endurance, strength and power. For this week, we're going to be performing the skill related fitness test. We're going to look at agility, balance and stability, coordination, speed and reaction time. These are your skill related components. Agility is the ability to rapidly change the position of the entire body in space with speed and accuracy. An example is dribbling a basketball back and forth between defenders. And for today's lab, we'll be able to test agility using the T-test and the Edgren sidestep test. For balance, the ability, uh, this is the ability to maintain the body center of gravity over its space of support. Uh, for example, doing a tandem walk. Stability as the ability to return to a desired position or trajectory following a disturbance. And coordination, that's the ability to use the senses such as sight and hearing together with body parts in performing tasks smoothly and accurately. An example of this is going to be the tennis ball ball toss test that we're going to be performing today in lab. Well, you'll be standing in front of a wall. You're going to be able to toss the tennis ball back and forth between left hand and right hand to the wall and back, successfully catching each throw and to test coordination. Talking more about skill-related components, power, that's the rate at which one can perform difficult work. For example, a football lineman pushing back a defender. Reaction time, the time elapsed between stimulation and the beginning of the reaction to it. For example, a sprinter reacting to the starting gun and then sprinting as fast as they can. Or um, the ruler drop test that we're going to be performing in the lab is going to be really fun. We're going to... Uh, your lab partner is going to hold the ruler uh, right in front of you, arm extended, and you're going to attempt to catch it as soon as you see the ruler drop and as, try to catch it as fast as you can without them telling you, right? Without them giving you a heads up that they're going to drop the ruler, you know, try to attempt to catch it as fast as you can. And speed, the ability to perform a movement within a short period of time such as a fast time in the 40 yard dash sprint, which is going to be one test that we're gonna be performing for today's lab to test speed. All right, for agility testing, the purpose of agility testing is to assess the current ability, right, for this skill, and also to measure progress resulting from training. So there's different tests that exist, which involve acceleration, deceleration, balance, speed, and coordination, uh, lateral movements, 
that involves forward, backward movements, and multi-directional movements, uh, which can be affected by acceleration, deceleration ability, right? So we'll be able to test lateral, lateral agility with this Edgren sidestep test, where you're gonna be able to move laterally and shuffle laterally uh, left to right as fast as you can, passing in the um, number of cones here. You're gonna be able to test acceleration and deceleration forward and backward movements with the T-test, which is gonna be able to sprint as fast as you can from the starting line A to point B, laterally moving to C, D, B, and uh, backpedaling all the way to the start line. And for agility testing and multidirectional movements, we'll be doing the hexagon test, where you'll be able to move forward and back, side to side, um, jumping uh, from inside the hexagon to outside as fast as you can. So these are going to be the three agility tests that we're going to do today. The T-test, the Edwin sidestep test, and the hexagon test for multidirectional agility. For balance and stability testing, the control of balance is complex and involves maintaining postures, facilitating movement, and recovering equilibrium. And balance controls cons uh, control consists of controlling the body's center of mass over its limits of stability, like Daniel San um, from The Karate Kid. If you don't know that movie, go watch it. Um, he is maintaining his balance right on the tip of this boat while he's performing downward blocks here. Um, balance is key, right? He's maintaining his center of mass over a limit of stability while performing uh, a light movement. He's maintaining his balance. So clinical balance assessment can help assess fall risk and or determine the underlying reasons for balance disorders. And one test that we are going to perform in this lab to, that's a clinical balance test that is going to allow us to study this uh, further, it's going to be the Fullerton Advanced Balance Test, the FAB test. And so neuromotor exercise training, which combines balance, agility, and proprioceptive training is effective in reducing and preventing falls if, of course, you're performing consistently, right? Between two to three days per week, which is what the ACSM recommends for you to perform neuromotor exercise training two to three days per week. So these are different types of balance tests. Balance exercises can be organized based upon whether the exercise is performed in a static or dynamic mode. So static tests, those consist of the center of gravity that is maintained over a fixed base of support on a stable surface. So without moving, right? That's this uh, static, no movement, semi-dynamic, that's the center of gravity is maintained over a fixed base of support while on a moving surface. Dynamic test, this is the maintenance of center of gravity within the limits of stability over a moving base of support while on a stable surface. Functional balance tests are very similar to the dynamic test with the inclusion of an activity or a specific task. And so there are many tests available for us to test balance, such as the STAR excursion balance test or the balance error scoring system. And for today's lab, we're going to be looking at the Fullerton Advanced Balance Test, the FAB test, which is very, um, it's more specific for uh, testing uh, the risk of falling and if you are a low risk of high risk for falling and um, related injuries. 
So this is the FAB test. It is mainly intended to identify highly act, uh, active older adults who are at an increased risk to experience fall-related injuries due to sensory impairments. So the test use, uses both dynamic and static balance uh, under different situations to identify balance deficits in older adults. So this test is very complete, it's really cool. You'll be able to study all these different um, tests, static, semi-dynamic, dynamic and functional balance tests. This uh, FAV test includes all of those. So please look at your data sheets. Um, there are 10 items that you're going to be scoring, uh, which means that the test includes 10 items. For those 10 items, each one of them you are going to score on a zero to four um, level. So the first item is going to be a test where you're going to be standing with your feet together and your eyes closed. And this is to test static balance and steadiness. This is to assess the ability to use somatosensory cues to maintain upright balance while standing in a reduced space of support and vision unavailable. So you're gonna be standing up feet together, um, eyes closed for about 20 seconds and you're going to hold it for those 20 seconds. And once your 20 seconds are up, you can open your eyes, test is done, and you're going to be able to score your client. For number two, this item, you're going to reach forward to retrieve an object. This is test static balance and also test reach. For test item number three, this test is you turning 360 degrees in the right and left direction. This is a dynamic balance test, and it also tests your gait. For item number four, you're going to step onto and over a six inch bench. This is a dynamic test, also testing gait. And for number five, this is a tandem walk, right, for dynamic balance and also stability. For number six, you're going to be standing on one leg only. This is a static test for stability. For item number seven, you're going to stand on a foam with eyes closed. This is a semi-dynamic balance test. It also assesses steadiness. For item number eight, this is a two-footed jump for distance. This is a dyna dynamic balance test and also for stability. For number nine, you're going to walk with head turns. This one's really fun. <laughs> uh, this is for dynamic balance and also steadiness. Also a little bit of gait uh, test. And for number 10, this is a reactive postural control. This one's also very fun. Um, to test your uh, test yourself, test each other. This is for static balance and postural stability. So please click on this link to watch the full video for the procedures for the FABS uh, test or FAB scale. And also look at your lab manual. It has very detailed instructions on what of uh, on each of these. 10 different balance tests and how you will score each one of the 10 tests. So please click on it, take a look at it, uh, look at your lab manual and also um, look at your data sheets on how you will be scoring this test. And this is the data sheet, right, for all of the different items that you're going to score. So for example, item number one, standing with feet together and your eyes closed. If you successfully complete this number one um, item, that will be that you were able to maintain the correct standing position safely with your eyes closed for 30 seconds. 
So I misspoke there. The test is for 30 seconds. But let's say that your client is an older adult, right? And is struggling with uh, this test of standing with feet together and their eyes closed. Um, they would score a zero. So you mark here zero if they were unable to obtain the correct standing position independently, right? And so you could see all the different uh, scoring from zero to four and what the, uh, they entail. All right, so let's move on to the other test that we're going to perform for lab. This is the T-test procedure. You're going to begin with both feet behind the starting line here, and you're going to sprint forward 10 yards to point B. And you're going to touch the cone with your right hand. Then you're going to shuffle left five yards to point C and touch with your left hand. From there, you're going to shuffle laterally all the way to the right to cone uh, D and touch the cone with your right hand. I'm gonna, and again, from here, you're gonna to shuffle as fast as you can laterally to cone V again, touch with your left hand, and then you're going to run backwards. You're gonna backpedal as fast as you can all the way back to the finish line, to point A. You're going to perform three trials and take the fastest score of all three. And if you want to see an example of this, go ahead and click on this link to watch a video of someone performing the T-test. This is the Edgren sidestep test. You're gonna have five cones or lines placed in a line. All of them are going to be three feet apart. It's gonna be about 12 feet total between the two outside cones. One, two. The starting position is going to be at the center cone, facing forward with your feet straddling the center line. You're going to sidestep to the right until the right foot touches or crosses the outside cone or tape, right all the way over here. Then you're going to sidestep or shuffle laterally, right all the way to the left until the left foot touches or crosses the left outside cone or tape. You're going to sidestep back and forth all the way to the left all the way to the right, um, to the outside of the cones, as rapidly as possible for 10 seconds. So you're going to shuffle all the way to the right, to the furthest, the last cone, and all the way to the left, to the last cone, as fast as you can for 10 seconds. And your lab partner is going to count the number of cones that you have crossed. You will deduct the point that would be, you know, a, a one cone, one point, if the far end lines are not crossed or are not reached. And if they fail to keep their trunk and feet always pointed forward, you also deduct the point if they cross their legs. The best result of the three trials is going to be recorded, and this is going to be the one that you're going to use for the scoring. And again, if you want to see an example of this test, please go ahead and click on this link so you can watch a video of that Edgren sidestep test. For the hexagon agility test, you want to start with both feet together in the middle of the hexagon facing the front line. That will be A. Jump ahead across the line and then back over the same line into the middle of the hexagon. You're going to continue to face forward with feet together, jump over the next side and back into the hexagon. Continue this partner pattern for three full revolutions. Perform the test both clockwise and anti-clockwise. 
Um, you're going to do three revolutions, right? Jumping outside the hexagon and inside the hexagon for every single side as fast as you can. And the score is going to be the time that it takes you to complete those three full revolutions. There is a half second penalty for touching the line or if you um, fail to look, uh, keep looking forward uh, at that same side of the hexagon. For the speed test, the 40 yard sprint, you're going to uh, perform that sprint 40 yards as fast as you can. And the score is going to be the time that it takes you to complete that test, right? So run, run those 40 yards as fast as you can. And please take about a minute or two minute rest uh, after you have completed the test, completely rest. Um, and then complete the second trial um, for that test and do so back and forth. Run as fast as you can, 40 yards, record the time, take two minute rest, and then complete the following trials. For the reaction time uh, test, uh, the ruler drop, this, um, Reaction time testing assesses a person's quickness to react to a stimulus. Right? A simple reaction time is the time taken between a stimulus and the movement. And so for the ruler drop test, you're going to stand um, facing um, your lab partner that's going to hold the ruler vertically in the air between the subject's thumb and index finger, right? So right around the zero, you wanna be uh, placing your thumb and index finger, but without touching the ruler, are right? you going to align the zero mark with the subject's fingers? The subject should indicate when they are ready, but without warning, you're going to release the ruler and let it drop. The subject must catch it as quickly as possible. And you're going to record in centimeters the distance of the ruler falling. I'm gonna repeat this several times and take the average score. And the way you're going to be scoring the ruler drop test for reaction time is going to be the square root of two times the distance in centimeters divided by 980. For coordination testing, the bow toss test, um, you're going to be standing behind a line two meters away from a facing, uh, away from and facing the wall. With a tennis ball, you're going to throw from one hand the tennis ball to the wall and then catch it with your left hand. You're going to continue this pattern of throwing the tennis ball with the right hand into the wall, catching it with the left, then with the left, throwing the tennis ball to the wall, catching it with the right, and go so on back and forth, tossing it to the wall, catching it with, with your left, alternating to the right. You're gonna continue to do this for the uh, set time of 30 seconds and you're going to count the number of successful catches that you obtain all right so you're going to be using the data sheet that we used from last week for the muscular strength, power, and endurance. So please complete the uh, table, right? Complete all four trials for the agility test, the sidestep test, the hexagon, 40 yard sprint, reaction time, and the ball toss test. And also the FAV test.
This is your lab manual. Please complete the results section. Score your clients uh, for every single test that we perform and answer the discussion questions. And that's it. Uh, please turn in lab eight. That's going to be both the lab manual and the data sheets from lab eight with the agility, with the skill related test and the fab test. And also I'm gonna be posting the lab project instructions. So please go ahead and start your case study, your lab project. The instructions are going to be on Canvas and you're gonna to start defining health and fitness goals. We're also going to be working on these for the last couple of weeks of the semester before your lab project. So we can go ahead, please get a head start, read the project instructions. So you have a little bit of an idea of what that's going to consist of. And we're gonna continue working on your goal setting for the last couple of weeks. Thank you for listening and have an awesome day.